Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Vulcan, and today we're covering the top 16 loot-focused isometric action RPGs that you need to check out. Now, these range from classics to sleepers to redemption stories. Some of these you most likely already know, but there might be a few in here that surprise you. And as with any purchase these days, please do some extra research on your own to see if a game is truly one that you'll enjoy. Also, don't be afraid to wait for a sale to save some cash in today's economy. So with that out of the way, let's get to it. We're kicking this list off with Grim Dawn. Now, this is one of the premier action RPGs on the market today. And even though it lacks flashy graphics, spell effects, and really just looks bad compared to other games out there, Grim Dawn more than makes up for it with its gameplay, class masteries, and a deep, deep modding community that even went so far as to recreate all of Diablo 2 through a mod called Reign of Terror. Plus, the game frequently goes on sale, creating an easy way for new players to check it out. Now, one last thing, there is a modding group that creates seasons for Grim Dawn that you can take part in as well. Now, Path of Exile is touted as a king of action RPGs by lots of players these days, and honestly, it's for good reason. The game has some of the deepest customization systems that we've seen in an isometric action RPG. Path of Exile throws players directly into the deep end with little more than a short tutorial and their imagination to create the character of their dreams. Now the game sports a massive passive skill tree with over 1500 nodes and you pair that with over 300 skills and supports and you can play almost any way that you want to. Combine that with 10 acts of story and a brand new league every three months and you have yourself a game that you can come back to time and time again. Lost Ark is the odd man out on this list as it's an action MMO RPG, but still it's one that has earned its place among the action RPG genre. While other games focus heavily on loot, Lost Ark brings top tier combat, story, and a huge online world to the table. Players get to pick from 15 advanced classes in the Western version, with some classes still making their way over from the Korean version of the game. Now, Lost Ark is still receiving frequent updates and will continue to add more and more content over time. And if you're okay with end game gear being less about loot fountains and more about content, then give this one a try. Even though the recent release of Diablo Immortal soured the gaming industry's view of Blizzard and the Diablo franchise, we can still appreciate what the previous games have given us. Diablo 3 released all the way back in 2012 and has since received one DLC and is still hosting seasons that add new twists to the already existing content. Be it through new gimmicks, balancing passes, or just giving players an alternative way of reaching endgame, Diablo 3 is still a very popular place to be on launch week for each new season. If you were to ask a handful of die-hard action RPG fans what their favorite or their first action RPG was, then you'll probably hear a good amount of them say Diablo 2. This was the game that truly put the action RPG genre on the map. So when Blizzard announced that they were going to be remastering Diablo 2 and releasing it as Diablo 2 Resurrected, the ARPG community was more than excited. The game received a huge facelift in terms of visual improvements, performance increases, and just an all-around better experience. So if you're someone who missed the boat for the original Diablo 2 craze, this is a great way to experience that game again. Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr has one of the longest names for a video game. It's brutal to say, it's an absolute mouthful, so we're just going to call it Martyr from here on out. This game launched back in 2017 and was met with criticism for its new take on ARPG combat. It relied heavily on cover. After some outcry from the player base, they ultimately overhauled combat to play more like Diablo. They sped it up and made it more action oriented. And since then, the game has seen more success. Now in Martyr, you get to pick from four classes, the Crusader, the Assassin, the Psyker, and the Tech Adept. And each one of these has subclasses to choose from, like an Assault Crusader, for instance, where you have a shield and sword, versus a Tactical Crusader who relies on ranged weapons. Now beyond that, Martyr also offers loads of story content, and they also included seasons to help bring some extra gimmicks to the otherwise static game. 
We just talked about the 41st millennium. Now let's take a step back into the old world with Warhammer Chaos Bane. When this game first released in 2019, it received tons of hype and unfortunately it really didn't live up to it. During my initial review, I called the game out as having incredibly fun combat, but it was too shallow and short for a fully priced game. However, since their release, they've added a DLC, overhauled the loot and end game system, and truly made it into a much more enjoyable experience. In Chaos Bane, you can choose from six classes now, the Imperial Soldier, the Mage, the Slayer, the Scout, the Engineer, and the Witch Hunter. Each has two specializations and a slew of gear set to farm out during endgame. Hero Siege is a pixel art online action RPG that follows the traditional formula. You pick a class, grind through the story to end game, farm for some gear, and then rinse and repeat each season. Where I find the most enjoyment in Hero Siege is in the classes. The game sports 19 unique and very different classes, ranging from the White Mage to the Illusionist and everything in between, even including a Redneck class where you can drive a truck and throw bombs. And each class has two talent trees you can specialize in. Now, when it comes to combat in this game, it's incredibly well done. And even though it is a pixel art game, which I know some won't enjoy, I would recommend giving it a chance as the gameplay elements make the install worth it. Just like Hero Siege, Chronicon is a pixel art action RPG, though this game is created by a single developer and doesn't have any online features. Instead, it's just a good old fashioned game. Chronicon gives you four classes to choose from, the Berserker, the Templar, the Warden, and the Warlock, each with many, many, many ways to customize your build. Now, this is where Chronicon truly separates itself from other games out there. The power fantasy in Chronicon is just unreal. Where typically action RPGs will gate players or provide ceilings when it comes to equipping too many powerful pieces of gear, or they cap your skill points, Chronicon doesn't. If you want to clear a full room using lightning or a bone storm, you absolutely can. Just grind the points and the gear to do it. Anima Reign of Darkness is a very, very on-the-nose tribute to Diablo 2. Originally launching as a mobile game, it has since made the leap to Steam, and after sinking a decent chunk of hours into it, it feels like a light meal compared to other action RPGs out there. So the question is, why is it on this list? Well, while it might be light for hardcore fans, it's a pretty strong gateway to those who are trying out the genre for the first time, or for parents who want their kids to try out an action RPG that's a little bit more mature than Minecraft Dungeons, but not as complicated as Path of Exile or Diablo 2 Resurrected. Torchlight 2 is a fantastic game that grew to fame because it took the Diablo formula, added a unique and colorful twist that changed just enough to make it feel like a new experience, while retaining the comfort of Diablo combat and progression. This makes sense considering the game was created by former Diablo developers. So what makes Torchlight 2 worth your time? Well, Grim Dawn kicked off this list and one of the perks of the game was a strong modding community. This is exactly why Torchlight 2 is on the list. Don't get me wrong, it is a great game on its own. I will recommend it every single time. But if you're someone who's seen their fair share of Torchlight games, then maybe it's time to try out a mod like Synergies. Something that adds brand new towns, a brand new crafting system, legendary weapons, and is basically a huge DLC added to the game, which gives you many, many more hours of enjoyment. Last Epoch has been the never ending story in the action RPG community. This game originally started as a hobby project when a handful of folks got together and said, hey, let's make an action RPG. Since then, it's grown into one of the more anticipated games that combines the feel and tone of Diablo 2 with the deep customization of Path of Exile. The unique thing about Last Epoch is that each skill has its own skill tree, giving players immense levels of freedom to create a build they truly want to play as. While the game is still in early access and continues to add content, new classes, and even multiplayer, the game is open to everyone on Steam. Titan Quest was thought to be dead and gone until May 2019, when suddenly they announced a DLC that was immediately available. It was a huge surprise for action RPG fans and put a breath of fresh air into the lungs of a classic game that many adored and honestly wished was still around. Since then, they have continued to add to the game through even more DLC. Titan Quest is still one of my absolute favorite games for its unique setting, Plus, its strong gameplay elements help keep it relevant throughout the years. 
I'm going to be honest with everybody. Okay. So Victor of Ran was never a game that stuck with me. The combat was good, but the gameplay loop and maps felt too arcadey for me in particular. However, people really seem to enjoy it. And with that, I wanted to make sure it was on this list. The game features tons of loot, outfits to collect, ever-changing dungeons, and a handful of weapons that change the skills you can use. Think of it kind of like Guild Wars 2. So overall, if you're looking for an ARPG that you can pick up, knock out a few maps, and then log off, give this one a look. Continue with the overall vampire theme, let's talk Van Helsing The Final Cut. This game is a compilation of all three Van Helsing games remastered into a single experience. Now, when I chat ARPGs with people, I almost never hear about this game, and I feel like that's pretty sad because it's a good game, and it has a different setting than you typically see. You have six classes to choose from, each with unique skills to help give you some identity, even one using like weird Frankenstein-like science that you can use to slay enemies, and you even have multiple levels of endgame with the glory system, scenarios, and events that'll change daily and weekly. Overall, if you've played most action RPGs and want something a little bit different, check this one out. Last up is Wolsen. This was a game that honestly broke my heart when it first launched. I played the alpha, the closed alpha, the beta, and I saw what amazing concepts there were. It had an open world setting. It had kind of this sort of Elder Scrolls like feel to it. And I was very disappointed when almost none of that ended up in the launch version. But what it did have was tons and tons of bugs. Now, fast forward a few years, and Wilson is actually a pretty solid action RPG these days. They overhauled the end game system, fixed most of the bugs, and have been adding rotating content into the game. However, I will say, if you weren't a fan of the combat system, that has not changed. You still sort of have to play this hybrid role, but if you didn't refund it and want to see what the game has turned into, I'd recommend giving it a go. So folks, there it is. This is the list of action RPGs that I think each fan of the genre should check out and play. So I want to hear from all of you. What games did I miss? Or do you have one that you absolutely love and want to talk more about it in the comments below? If you like action RPGs, consider subscribing. That's what my channel is all about. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you next time.